So we're in section 3.2. All right, so quick, quick uh, sketch of a graph of an exponential function. So here's a generic, here's a generic exponential function. Um, does this, does this graph pass the vertical line test? Yeah. Yes. So it's a function. Does it pass the horizontal line test? Yeah. Yeah. So our function pass the horizontal line test. What does that tell us about this function? What's special about functions that pass the horizontal line test? Yeah. Has an inverse. So exponential functions have inverse functions. <coughs> we call the inverse functions logarithmic functions. And the way that we write them, we would say y equals log base a of x. And we're saying that x is greater than 0. Because with our inverse functions, remember, we switch the x's and y's. Here, y is greater than 0, so x is greater than 0 for our inverse function. Um, we're saying a is positive and doesn't equal 1. And we call this the logarithmic function with base a. So a is our, a is our base. And because logarithmic functions and exponential functions are inverse functions, we say that y equals log base a of x if and only if, this is our, our important relationship here, a to the y equals x. So we switch we switch the x's and y's for our inverse functions. So these two things, the way that I've written them here, mean the same thing. <coughs> so if we look at this, the way we've written it here, the logarithm, y, is an exponent. The logarithms are exponents. So we can think of them as exponents. And when I look at when we look at something like this, we can think of this as saying, what power do I have to raise a to to get x? I have to raise a to the y power to get x. That's what this is telling me. So let's look at some examples of thinking about logarithms as, as exponents. So I'm going to write here, I'm going to write Uh, logarithmic form, and over here I'm going to write exponential form. <coughs> so our problem might say evaluate. Evaluate log base 2 of 8. So I look at this problem and I say what power do I have to raise 2? Two to get eight. And what is that power? Three. Because two to the third equals eight. These two things mean the same thing. Power that I have to raise two to to get eight is three. Because two to the third is eight. How about log base 2 of point 
to five. Nikki says, what? Negative two. I can think of log base two of 0.25, but what's, what's another way I could write 0.25? One fourth. One fourth. The power that I have to raise two to, to get one fourth, is negative two, because two to the negative two equals one fourth. This is asking me what power do I have to raise two to, to get one fourth. How about, how about log base three of 81? Three, four, three times three is nine times three is 27. So what does our power have to be? Four. 27 times three is 81. Because three to the fourth equals 81. How about um, log base 10 of 1, 1,000. Negative 3. Because 10 to the negative third equals 1, 1,000. Let me give you a tricky one, see if anyone can figure this one out. How about log base 16 of 8? I'll give you a hint, it's a fraction. So think, think of logarithms as exponents, yeah? Two thirds, you're close. What, so eight, if I, when I look at eight, I think of eight is a power of what? Power of what number? Two, it's a power of two. So how do I get from 16 to a two? Close. We want to take a, not, we don't want to, we don't want to divide, but we want to take a root. So what is that, what root is that? Fourth root. So we know the denominator is a four. So we take the fourth root of 16, we get two. And what power of two gives us eight? Three. Three fourths. Because 16 to the three fourths equals eight. The fourth root of 16 is two, and two to the third is eight. Um, possibly, possibly. One thing that we'll get better at in this during this unit is thinking in powers, thinking of powers of numbers. All right, I want to, I want to write uh, a, a few of these in exponential form and go the other direction to logarithmic form. Okay. Um, so I want to, I want to rewrite these. Uh, 8 squared equals 64. I want to write these in the, the logarithmic form. It means the same thing. I'll get it started. Log, what's our base? 8 of 64 equals 2. Log base 8 of 64 is 2 because 8 squared is 64. How about... Uh, Nine to the three halves equals 27. I want to rewrite that. Log nine, that's our base. Our base is nine. Of 27 equals three halves. 
All right, let me see if I can, let me throw you a little tricky one here and see if you can figure it out. U to the V equals W. No numbers. One math at best with no numbers. Log base U of W equals V. Because U to the V equals W. This switching back and forth from exponential to logarithmic form, kind of thinking in both ways, that's going to be really the key to this, to a good part of this unit. All right, questions there? So some properties of logarithms that comes, come directly from them being inverse functions of exponential functions. Uh, log base A of 1. What's a log base A of, for any base, what's a log base A of 1 going to be? Zero. Because A to the 0 equals 1. This is true for any base. <coughs> Uh, second one, log base A of A. What power do I have to raise A to to get A? One. one. Uh, log base A of A to the X. What power do I have to raise A to to get A to the X? X. And we can think of these as inverse functions, so the logarithmic function and the exponential function of the same base undo each other. And I could also say a to the log base a of x. These are inverse functions. They undo each other. So that's just x. And finally, if log base a of x equals log base a of y, same base on both sides, then x equals y. So we have the same base on both sides. Whatever is inside the logarithmic function has to be equal. All right, questions Questions on those properties? And those are straight from <coughs> our, in, because they're inverse functions. All right, let's look at a couple of examples using this, these ideas. Uh, we want to solve this equation. Log base 5 of x equals log base 5 of 8. x equals 8. I have the same log base of my logarithmic function on both sides, so whatever is inside the logarithmic functions have to be the same. How about, uh, this one's a little trickier. Log base 5 of 1 equals x. x equals 0. Very good. Because 5 to the what power gives me 1? 0. 5 to the 0 power gives me 1. So x equals 0. Questions there? All right, uh, graphs, mm -hmm. our favorite, favorite topic, graphing. So lots of interesting graphs on the test. Um, um, all right, so all of these things for the graphs of logarithmic functions come directly from it being the inverse function of the exponential function. So the domain. So we're talking about graphs of y equals log base a of x. So an unshifted logarithmic function. 
the domain. Remember when we uh, when we work with inverse functions, the domain and the range switch. So what is our domain of our logarithmic function going to be? <coughs> What was the range of an, our, our exponential function? I'm going to look back here at the graph. What's the range of this graph? Zero to infinity. There we go. So that becomes the domain of our logarithmic function. So what this tells us, we have to plug in a positive number <coughs> into our exponential or into our logarithmic function. Whatever we plug in here has to be positive. We can't take the logarithm of a negative number. Our range. So for exponent for inverse functions, the domain and the range switch. So what's our range of our logarithmic function going to be? What was our what was our domain of exponential function? Negative infinity to infinity. We could plug in any number into our exponential function. So that becomes the range of our logarithmic function. Instead of a y-intercept, we get an x-intercept. So our y-intercept for our exponential function was 1, 0. So where does our x-intercept, what point becomes our x-intercept? Sorry, I said it backwards. Our, our y-intercept was 0, 1 for our exponential function. So what's going to be our x-intercept? 1, 0. The x is in y switch. So any unshifted logarithmic function is going to have an intercept, an x-intercept at 1, 0. Our exponential function have the x-axis as a horizontal asymptote. <coughs> so what's going to be our asymptote of our logarithmic function? The y-axis is going to be a vertical asymptote. And the equation of the y-axis, the equation of the line, is x equals 0. And our function, our logarithmic function, is increasing. Always increasing if a is greater than 0. And we usually use positive bases for logarithmic. All right, so using this information, let's sketch a, a graph of what, a, a kind of our generic graph of a logarithmic function. So we'll graph y equals log base 2 of x. Uh, we know that we're going to have a vertical asymptote here on the y-axis. And we know that we're going to have an x-intercept at 0, 1. So we have that point in there. And to get the shape of our graph, we can plug in some, some, nice, some nice numbers, some friendly numbers to calculate. For logarithmic functions, you want to plug in you want whatever you're trying to find the log of to be a power of your base. That will make it easy to, easy to calculate. So let's plug in f of... Um, one half. So that's going to be the log base two of one half. And what's the log base two of one half? Negative one. The power I have to raise two to get one half. Negative one. So I get a point at uh, one half negative one. I already know that f of one equals log base two of one. So we know that's zero. That's our intercept. Uh, let's plug in 2. Log base 2 of 2. Power do I have to raise 2, 2 to get 2? 1. So I get here a 2, I get a point now 1. And then we'll plug in f of 4. Log base 2 of 4 equals 2. So over here at x equals 4, I get a point here at 2. 
and my function ends up looking like so. And remember that my exponential function, y equals 2 to the x, looked like this. And what's the relationship between these two graphs? They're inverses. And the inverse, what does it do to the graph? Reflects over the line y equals x. So if I drew the line y equals x here, they would be reflections of each other. So any unshifted logarithmic function is going to look more or less like this graph. It's always going to go through the point 1, 0. It's always going to have the y-axis as, as a vertical asymptote. And our logarithmic functions are going to shift, transform, just like any other function. And just like our exponential function, this intercept and the asymptote shift with the function. So if we, want, if we need to sketch a graph of a shifted function, I just need to remember that my intercept and my asymptote shift. That will give us a place to start. And then we just plug in friendly numbers. We want to get, what we want to try to evaluate powers of our base so that we can calculate additional, additional points. So if we had, let's say, a log base 10 of x is our parent function. So what would happen to y equals log base 10 of x minus 2? What, how would that transform? What does it do? Right 2. So then we would, if we wanted to graph, sketch a graph of this transformation, my asymptote would shift over two units, my intercept would shift over two units, and all of these points that we graphed here would shift over two units. So a nice number to plug in here, if we plugged in x equals 4, or sorry, not we're log base 10, um, we would want to plug in, for example, uh, 12. 12 minus 2 is 10, log base 10 of 10 is 1. So that would be a nice point to plug in, for example to get give an additional point. And then if we had y equals log base 10 of x minus 2 plus 3, what is what happens to this one? Right 2, up 3. So the up and down won't change our asymptote, but this point would move right to and up three, so we'd have a point on our graph, and then we would be able to calculate some additional points from there. All right, questions so far? Yes? Can I ask you to, um, to uh, use the property of logarithm to simplify the expression without saying to do something? How do you go about doing this? So it's asking you to do, use these properties. Okay. So those, these are the only ones that we know so far. So it, it would have to do something with that. All right, there are two, there are two bases of logarithms that we'll see most frequently. The common logarithm. Common logarithm is base 10. 
So because our number base is base 10, you'll see common logarithms. So when you see log of x and you don't see a base written there, that is log base 10 of x. We don't have a base written there. We understand that it's log base 10. And on your calculator, that's the button that says log. <coughs> on your calculator, the log button is the log base 10. So that's one of our common bases, is the common logarithm. And we also have the natural logarithm. And the natural logarithm is base e. And if we remember <coughs> that when we were working with our compound interest formula, 1 plus 1 over x to the x power approaches e as x approaches infinity. And the way you'll see base e written is ln x. That is the same as log base e of x. ln means natural logarithm. So when we see ln, you should think base e. In science, science mostly you'll use uh, log base e. And we'll see uh, we'll see next time tomorrow how we switch the bases. It doesn't really matter what base we choose; we can switch between them pretty easily. But because base e comes from this formula, that comes up in a lot of places in math. We use that most most common base is base e. All right, so let's let me do let's do a couple of problems that have to do with a natural logarithm. It's easy to it's easy to confuse the natural logarithm because you see when you see this lnx. All right, what would we do? How would we find the natural log of e to the fifth? What would be the natural log of e to the fifth? If it helps you to remember. You can write this as log base e of e to the fifth. And what's that going to be? What power am I raising e to to get e to the fifth? Five, <coughs> right? And we can think of the logarithmic function and the exponential function undoing each other. So all I'm left with is five. Uh, what about e to the natural log of 3? What would that be? That would just be 3. We could think of this as e to the log base e of 3. The exponential function and the logarithmic function undo each other. And we just get 3. How about the natural log of 1 over e squared? What's another way I could write 1 over e squared? e to the negative 2. Natural log of e to the negative 2 is just negative 2. The logarithmic function and the exponential function are inverses. They undo each other. Um, let's look at, I want to look at a couple more types of examples, just two more examples, and then we will be done. We want to find the domain of f of x equals the natural log of x plus 3. So we can do this a couple different ways. Where was our vertical asymptote for an unshifted logarithmic function? At
unshifted logarithmic function, where is our vertical asymptote? At x equals zero. What happens, so we said our domain for an unshifted logarithmic function was x greater than zero. Well, what happens to this one? It's shifted left three. So what does that make our domain? x greater than, if we normally our asymptote is a zero and we shift it left three, where does that take our asymptote? Negative three, right? So x has to be greater than negative three. We could also do this one by saying we know that whatever we plug into our logarithmic function has to be greater than zero. We could say x plus three has to be greater than zero. So x is greater than negative three. We can do it either way. Thinking of this as shifting or thinking that we have to plug in a positive number into our exponential or logarithmic function. All right, last example. Find the x-intercept of the natural log of x plus 3 minus 1. Well, we know that what was once the x-intercept goes, uh, goes left 3 and down 1, but that doesn't tell us what our new x-intercept is. So we have to do something else here. What does y equal when we have our x-intercept? Zero. So we set our function equal to zero. Natural log of x plus 3 minus 1 equals zero. And I want to solve for x. So I get natural log of x plus 3 equals 1. And now I want to write this in exponential form. Well, this is log base, if it helps us remember, log base e of x plus 3 equals 1. So how would I write this in exponential form? What power of e do I have to raise, what power do I have to raise e to to get x plus 3? 1. So e to the 1 equals x plus 3. And x equals e minus 3. That would be my x-intercept. <coughs> and e is about 2.7, so this would be just slightly less than slightly less than one. All right, questions? All right, there you go.